Today, let's do some website SEO reviews. First of all, thank you so much for submitting your websites earlier. At the end, I received a total of 18 websites. Well, I can't cover them all in this video. I personally review all of them. In this video, I'll share the top issues I've identified and how to improve. Let me first share my review process because likely you want to do it on your own. The first step is to run a basic SEO audit, and this is essential as you can quickly identify issues and get an idea on the areas you need to put more effort you can use any proper SEO tools like SEMrush, Ahrefs, SEO Ranking, Screen4. I also have another video about SEO audit, you can check it out. But don't just rely on the audit tool, use your own judgment. And this is why experience matters. Every time I will navigate a website, understand the actual site experience, click on the links to verify my findings before I fix certain items. It's hard to teach judgment in this video, but all I wanna say is combining audit tools with hands-on site reviews is what makes an audit truly effective. All right, the first one, lack of clear site hierarchy. That means how you can group different contents in a logical way. A clear site structure is so important, but it's often overlooked as a clear structure can help engines to crawl your page faster and identify your niche quickly. So like this blog website, although it seems it has a good structure, it's simple, but from the user perspective, it's hard to tell what is the niche because there's no clear content categories unless user keep scrolling the blog pages. Even Google find is hard to understand and only a few URLs are indexed. I would say this is particularly important if you're running a blog or purely content site. So try to put these categories or your content pillars on the navigations as a subcategory on the blog to speed up the page discovery process because the navigations is where it sits across all pages. Another example from this language learning service business site, which is the opposite. There are too many categories on the navigation bar and they look all similar, which makes it harder for engines to understand the site hierarchy and priorities. So try to keep around three to seven items on the navigations, which is a sweet spot. And that leads into the next linking issues, which are issues related to hyperlinks impacting SEO. And this is one of the most common SEO issues and should be fixed with high priority. Usually websites have linking issue because of the site structure is not well-defined or confusing navigations, which we just talked about. If you use an SEO audit tool, you can easily find these linking issues. So first is again navigations. Like this e-commerce site, most of the ranked pages are product page. And this is the problem because for e-commerce, category page are usually pages that are and should rank first because they're usually the entry point for search engine to discover your other product pages. When we look at the product page, you can see background is missing, which means search engines is not able to discover the category page. And this is the missing opportunity. So the tip here is make sure on every page, especially those that are not at the upper level of your site hierarchy, have a clear navigation path for search engines to quickly understand the site structure. And our type is broken links. Just to be clear, broken links are normal. But if the broken links happen on the navigations and there are many of them, then this is a web flood. Because again, navigations is where usually search engines start crawling to discover your site pages. So like this medical insurance service business website, you can see there are lots of broken lanes on the navigations and because usually you will put the most important lanes on the navigations. So having these broken lanes will decrease the trust signals from Google. So make sure you review your site navigations and every lane should be accessible. And our type is duplicated content, which means there are more than one URL having nearly identical content. Like this e-commerce site, it has this category page set up and is now used on the navigation, which is good. But when you click click on a product and click back on the category level, you will see the link is different, although the content is nearly identical. So that is the problem because it confuses engines which versions is more important and will minimize ranking potential. So you should determine which URL versions you prefer and make sure you keep it consistent across the site and then you double check which URL that is currently ranked on Google and you do a 301 permanent redirection. Another type is contextual internal link. That is lack of internal links put in the content to signal search engines about the content relevance between pages. Like this blog content for this surface website, there's no internal link throughout the whole piece of content to link back to another relevant pages or a surface page. 
also the link on the background is not linkable which is the navigation link issue we talk about so always think about the wallet fund internal links you can use throughout the content so in this case learning medicare is a topic pillar page and then we can add links back to all the relevant pages to strengthen the internal linking other common and important link issues also include redirect chains that means there are multiple redirections as search engines crawl a url making the crawling process less efficient and the redirection should be removed so i always suggest drawing a mind map to visualize the linking relationship between all of your important pages or sections if you have a big website so you can always better plan how they link together and have a clear site hierarchy Next is generic page title. Page title is the most important on-page SEO element besides your actual on-page content. So if the page title is too generic, it's hard for the engines to understand what your page is about and you will miss out good keyword ranking opportunities. Like this therapy service business website, you can see the page title for the homepage is simply the brand name without mentioning the business positioning or category. So it's hard for Google to understand what business it is. Same case on the surface page just using surface is not ideal so try to make it more specific to capture more keyword opportunities another example from this business surface website again the home page page title is just home with the brand name which can be further optimized so my general tips for setting the page title of a home page is to use your brand name and also your business positioning such as business consulting counseling service and the page title doesn't need to be exactly the same as the page header tag you can use other keywords words that is relevant to the page content. So we view those high value pages or important pages. What are the page title that you're currently using? Can it reflect the page content with good target keywords? And that leads into the next search intent mismatch. Sometimes even if you have a search optimized page title, it's not enough because if your page content is not matching the search intent for that search query, you can't improve the ranking because it means there is quality issue. Again, back to this surface business website, obviously this on-page content for the search surface page is signaling about individual psychotherapy. But if we search this keyword on Google, you can see most of the content is informational. And that means people may not be looking for surface, they may just be looking for information. So we should use a more specific keyword and signal a commercial intent to match the search intent for this surface page. Also note what are the keywords used there for the top ranked pages. For example, individual therapy, individual counseling. That means these may be a more public keywords people often use related to this topic. So I always suggest do an actual search for a target keyword and make sure you understand the search intent and to fulfill in your content. Next is funnel imbalance and that means content leans towards to a particular funnel stage and usually is top of funnel. Even though you don't have anything to sell, your content should still cover all the journey stages like consideration, conversions because this is how you eventually build a loyal audience online who perhaps eventually take actions like a newsletter subscription. For this blog website, we can see content is mainly around top of funnel informational keywords. For example, what are the basic steps to start a blog? So instead of just targeting informational keywords, we can write niche topics around the pain points like how to keep the posting consistency in-depth review between blog platforms with your own experience. And this will attract the audience at different stages, build more trust and establish your expertise. The next is what I call thin site structure. It is different from unclear site structure or thin content. It refers to website that has very thin structure without enough pages to capture keyword opportunities. And this usually happens for new websites. I'm not saying that you need to build so many pages as quality is still more important than quantity. But assume the same content quality, having more pages under the same website can increase the chance your site gets seen. For example, this website featuring a podcast seems this is basically a one-page website so unless it is a well-known brand or product or it leverage lots of other digital channels media to boost the branding it will be difficult to get seen as a new brand with only one page so in this case there are 36 episodes i would suggest building separate pages for each episode like putting the full transcript 
key takeaways, the core topics in order to capture more keyword opportunities. So once you start accumulating signals, it will help improve the overall ranking for the domain. Another example from this personal site, it has a clear niche around digital marketing, but there are not enough pages to build strong internal linking structure and capture keyword opportunities. So the easiest way is to focus on one topic, for example, AI, building more content around this topic before you switch to another topic cluster. And to keep the consistency, try to establish a publishing schedule that is realistic to you and production workflow, like two articles per week. And I highly suggest keeping a running list of content ideas whenever you feel inspired, came across some ideas, researching, so you can always get topics to write about. And that leads into the next, the long tail high intent keyword strategies that any websites can benefit from. And it works for both new sites or even websites that already have some steady SEO traffic. Basically, that is building pages targeted for long tail high intent keywords. Because even though long tail keywords have lower search amount, they usually are high intent and so traffic is usually high quality and likely to convert. And the best thing is they're less competitive. Again, for this health insurance service website, currently there's no page targeting high intent niche keywords like medical insurance for senior adults, just like what this competitor is doing. So I would recommend building more of these kind of niche service page. Think about the common problems like dental medical coverage for senior, so you can maximize the chance your website to be seen for these high intent keywords and get leads. Even if it is not a new website and already have some SEO traffic, again, like this language learning website, we can still use this strategy. We can filter page two and page three keywords to see if any high intent keyword, and obviously you can see Spanish class online for kids are often comes on the list. But currently the site lack of the page to target this keyword, and this is the opportunity. And I would say this is particularly important for new websites because usually for new brands, people don't know about you. So you can't expect people to search your brand name and same time your domain is too new to compete with those high volume broad keywords. So building a really targeted pages for high intent keywords will be your biggest bet. All right, some of the submitted websites are headed by Google's helpful content update. It's not destructive, but still the traffic is seriously impact. There are a few areas that will likely trigger a hit. First, it is an unclear niche. Just like this website, it has different types of content, sometimes about business letter writing, sometimes economics, sometimes about stories. I'm not saying that you can't have multiple niche, but I wouldn't recommend going too extreme when starting out. And second, that is bad user experience. There's so many ads on the website. I just use ad blockers so you can't see it. So try to think from user perspective and how you can make the experience better. And third, low effort content. User generic image and content without sharing some in-depth opinions. If your website has all three, it will be at high risk of being hit. So to recover, it usually needs some fundamental changes like building content closely tied with a niche, build cluster by cluster before you initiate a new niche, we want the site experience and include your first-hand experience, use original image to improve the trustworthiness. Another example is this food ingredient manufacturer site. Food and health related websites definitely falls into your money or your life topic. So usually Google will have a high standard towards this website. So improving the trust signals will be a way to recover. For example, include relevant support for the health claims just like this site it includes lots of data supporting even for the blog articles. And also show more detailed medical expertise on your product page just like this site has a very detailed safety data sheet to increase the trust signals. And also make sure your social media links are accessible as this is also a trust signals that search engines will use. Now, bonus is about getting leads. Like this website, even though they're getting steady as a traffic, they mentioned they're facing challenges getting enough leads. The first thing that I noticed is they don't have what I call medium risk actions. The only actions to take is to book a call. But to the prospect, this is a high risk ask. So think about how you can lower the risk for them. Perhaps building a free training, self-guided tour, or lead manners to capture these leads. And the second thing is about the traffic quality and it's usually impact by content strategies. I would suggest to do a more in-depth audit to see if you're getting traffic from the bottom funnel with high intent keywords. 
because I noticed most of the content are informational, except the customer case study or the product pages. But if most of your ranking keywords are top of funnel, then it won't help conversions. Of course, there's still other factors impacting your site conversion as well, like your messaging, your credibility, business model, but these are the two of them I'll look at. So to recap, here is the top SEO issues found across these websites. I must say different types of website needs a different digital growth strategies. And it's not just about getting visibility, but also how to build funnel to get leads. If you have more questions and want my priority and personalized response, I'm launching my community. You can find the link below. I hope to see you there. And if you're planning a new website and don't know how to approach SEO, you can check out this video. I'll see you next time.